Hi, I'm Chris Hess, Manager of Engineering at Harrington Hoist. Welcome to another episode of Lessons on Lifting. Hi, my name is Adam Tansky, an engineer in Harrington's Custom Products Engineering Group. Uh, today we're going to be performing a voltage change on this ER2 MR2 trolley hoist. Um, we're going to be changing this trolley hoist from 460 volt to 230 volt. These units are capable of running on 230 or 460 volt three phase power. They are, we can perform voltage changes on single speed units. That's an important thing to note. Dual speed units that is not possible due to the voltage specific VFD inside either the trolley, the hoist, or both. Uh, one way you can tell if it's single or dual speed is to take a look at the product code on the hoist cover. Right after the numerical description, there is a letter designator. If it's a single letter, that tells you that you have a single speed unit and a voltage change is possible. If you have two letters, for example, LD, the D, the second letter, tells you that it's a dual speed unit, so a voltage change is not possible, again, because the VFD inside is voltage specific. Another way to tell is to actually physically look inside the unit underneath either one of the covers. If you see a VFD inside there, that will tell you that you have a dual speed unit and a voltage change is not possible. Uh, the next thing you need to do when performing a voltage change is to obtain the proper wiring diagram. The best resource for that is our website, uh, harringtonhoists.com. And once you obtain the wiring diagram, which I have here for our particular situation, there are a few pieces of information you need to pull off of that wiring diagram. Uh, for ER2, MR2, you're going to refer to either 71,000, that drawing number, if you're dealing with a hoist only. 71,002 is the drawing you're going to deal with if you have a trolley and hoist configuration, which is what we have here. So we'll be using drawing 71,002. Now there is a chart on here from which you're going to need to pull a piece of information about the gear reductions on the unit. The units are either two or three gear reduction and on the wiring diagram there is a chart where you would look at your product code which you can obtain from the label on the outside of the unit. You could find your product code and that will tell you on the chart what body size hoist you're dealing with and what gear reduction you're dealing with and based on that information there are more pictorial representations of the information you need on the wiring diagram and you can select the appropriate one based on the gear reduction you just found from the chart. The next thing you need to know is where you're going to be physically working on your unit, the access points you need to take into consideration. On this ER2 MR2 combination we're going to be dealing with two access points. One is right here behind the hoist control cover. The other is in the trolley motor section of the unit which is on the reverse side of this beam. Now that we've established all that information, we know what voltage we're going from to, uh, we know what particular unit we're working with, um, we're ready to get started. And like I said, this is one of the access points and that's where we're going to begin. So we're going to start by removing the front cover. We're going to be taking our Allen key and going for these four bolts, one in each corner, and you're just going to be removing the lid so you can start work. One important point to mention is that before you begin any work on any electrical product, you're going to want to make sure that your power is completely disconnected. Remember, safety first, you don't want to take any risks. So make sure that your power entering the hoist is completely disconnected before you do any work on the inside. Now that we're ready to take our hoist cover off, simply remove it, let it hang from the fabric strap. Now we can take a look at the area that we need to work with. Um, it's a very good and useful idea to simply take a piece of masking tape and attach your wiring diagram um, in a good visual spot wherever you're going to be working. That way you can free up your hands to work with your tools and keep track of what you need to keep track of. You're going to be looking at this terminal one for your transformer connections and comparing what it currently is at to the configuration you narrowed down on your wiring diagram to see where it needs to be. And as you can see, if you were to compare the two points on your wiring diagram, the only wires you're going to be need, cha need to be changing are the ones that are wrapped in tape that have the labels on them. 
Red and black wires off to the side on the far left here don't even need to be moved. So the ones that you're concentrating are on are the four with the labels on them. And in order to remove them, you just need a small implement that will allow you to push in the yellow buttons. Upon pushing it in, that frees up the termination point, and you just go ahead and remove all four of them. Now there are some cases in which not every wire will need to be relocated, but it's important to point out, and it could be useful, that they're so similarly labeled, for example, W1, U1, UW, without the best eyesight in the world, it could be very easy to confuse what they're labeled as. So a smart thing to do is to just remove all of them, and based on the configuration designated on your wiring diagram, just start over and build it from the ground up. So it eliminates the possibility for some errors to be made. So from this point, I would identify which wire, pick one, identify the label on it, this one happens to be U1, reference the configuration on my wiring diagram that I need to end up with, and attach that where the diagram tells me to. And I'll do that for all, all four wires, and then we'll be ready to move on to the next step. We've now completed our transformer connections on terminal one, and something you're going to want to do is to take a firm grip on it, Give it a gentle tug, make sure it doesn't come out, just to make sure your connections are nice and secure. Now that we've completed the transformer connections, we're ready to move on to the motor connections. And on some of the hoists, and this happens to be one of them, in order to get to those motor connections, this panel needs to be unscrewed and slid out of the way. And that's accomplished by unscrewing one screw here, one screw here, and a third up top, which I've already loosened. And you're going to want to carefully remove this while threading it over a anchoring pin in the top left corner. And once you carefully guide that off, you can simply swing it out of the way. And now you're ready to conduct your uh, terminal changes on your motor connections underneath. Again, you're going to want to have your wiring diagram handy, so simply tape it up in a location that's easy to look at. Free again, freeze up your hands. And again, I'm going to give the same piece of advice we did for the transformer connections. These wires, um, you're going to be referring to all the gray ones on, on the right side in this situation. They're all very similarly labeled, uh, U1, uh, V1, X1, and um, it could be very difficult to misread them. So in order to avoid the possibility of mixing up one up with another and causing a, uh, a greater problem, I would simply advise you to remove them all refer to one of them at a time while referencing the wiring diagram and simply build it from the ground up. Again, it just minimizes the possibility of error. So, again, we're going to take our small and narrow Allen key and these, again, are not screwed off, so you're just going to use the same push button method you did before. Simply push it in, push in the yellow button, pull the wire out, and I'm going to do that for the remaining wires. Refer to the wiring diagram and then we're ready to build it back up. And now we've reestablished the motor connections. What you want to do um, with the first terminal as well as the current terminal is always check your work before you move on, before you go through the trouble of closing something up, avoiding having to come back and redo it. Have the wire diagram handy as you always should and just recheck your work to make sure. And as we did on the first terminal, you just want to firmly grab the wires, give them a good tug to make that sure that they're uh, securely grasped by the clamp within the terminal strip. And we've done that, and we've checked it against our wiring di diagram, and we are ready to begin undoing what we just did. So we can swing this plate back into place, carefully position it over that pin, carefully positioning the wires as we're doing this, making sure the three screws line up while we're doing this. Grab our screwdriver that we used before. And start reinstalling the plate. Now we've reinstalled the plate. We guided it back over the pin that holds it secure. 
We've retightened the three screws that we loosened in the first place. And while doing all this, there's a couple things you want to keep in mind. You're always going to want to make sure that this gasket is not caught between the plate and the hoist body. You don't want to pinch that. And you're going to want to always keep in mind that your wires should be nicely placed as tightly and cleanly as possible because you don't want to encounter pinching of any sort when you reinstall the cover. So now that we've made sure of all those things, you're going to carefully reinstall the cover. And there is a pin on the top towards the middle that you're going to want to line up with a hole on the cover here. Again, keeping in mind that you do not want to pinch any wires. You line that up properly. And then with the four bolts you removed in the beginning, having them handy, you're going to undo what you did and reinstall the hoist cover. We're now ready to move on to the second location for our ER2 MR2 trolley hoist and that will be the trolley motor connections behind this panel here. <coughs> Again, we recommend, just to simplify your life and free up your hands to work with your tools only, to uh, tape your wiring diagram in a convenient spot for you. And then we're going to get to work removing this panel. Um, it's held on by four screws, three of which I've already removed. And we recommend this approach because it allows you to do a, uh, just a little trick to, to, again, make your life simpler. Keep the fourth screw installed, rotate the plate out of your way a little bit, and then retighten that fourth screw. That's one less screw you could possibly lose. You don't have to worry about the panel falling if you're wor working with your uh, unit in um, heights near the top of your building. It just simplifies things a little bit. So now we're going to reference the trolley motor connections, which you identified in the beginning based on the information on the chart on the wiring diagram. Um, take a look at where they're terminated. Compare that to the configuration that you currently have in your trolley motor connections and see the changes that you need to make. And again, the X1, Y1, V1, W1, for example, those sorts of wires are all labeled similarly. The text on the wire labels might not be big for uh, certain individuals' eyes, so it could be easy to mix up. So in order to avoid confusion, we would recommend removing all of the wires that have labels on them and then reinstalling them according to the configuration laid out on your wire diagram. The black, blue, and red wires do not need to be moved. They can stay where they are. So you're just working with the gray wires that have labels on them. So I'm going to remove all of these, reference my wiring diagram, reattach them the way that it indicates, and then that will complete that step. We've now made all the new connections for our trolley, trolley motor connections for our voltage change. So the next thing you're going to want to do is just, while referencing your wiring diagram, check your work. Go to one terminal at a time, left to right methodically checking the wires that you have connected and making sure it matches what it's supposed to be. After you've completed that, you're ready to reverse the few simple steps that you did to get to this point. Loosen that one screw that is holding the plate in place at the moment. Swing it back into place while taking care that you're not pinching any wires. Make sure the gasket is lined up properly with the holes. And then using the other three screws, you're going to reinstall them and tighten the plate back into place. We've now completed all the work necessary to convert a uh, 460 volt MR2 ER2 trolley hoist to 230 volt. The last thing there is for you to do is to hook up the power and make sure that your hoist runs properly according to the indicators on the pendant, radio, or whatever device you're using. If it happens to run backwards, there's one thing that you need to check because this is a three-phase hoist. At the point of your disconnect box, what you need to do if it's running backwards is switch any two legs of power in that disconnect box. Do not change the wiring of the trolley hoist at that point. And once you've done that, if you encounter that problem, once you've switched any two legs, check it again and it should run properly. And then you know you have completely, successfully completed a voltage change on your unit. Again, my name is Adam Tansky. I'm an engineer in Harrington's Custom Products Group. Thank you for watching. That concludes another episode of Lessons on Lifting. Thank you for joining the revolution.